The gentleman yields back. The gentlelady from Florida is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Chairman Jordan. And thank you to all of our witnesses for appearing uh, here today. I'm just gonna start going right down the line uh, with a simple question. When a candidate campaigns for office, they make promises, correct? We'll start with you, Mr. Costello. Correct, obviously. You want to be a dictator. Sure. Mr. Trustee, Mr. Hamilton? Yes. Yes. One makes, wonderful. So I'm gonna dig into what the prosecutors and plaintiffs have uh, said about Mr. Trump here recently. Alvin Bragg, during his campaign for New York County District Attorney said, quote, I am the candidate in the race who has the experience with Donald Trump. I was the chief deputy in the attorney general's office. We sued the Trump administration over 100 times for the Muslim travel ban, for family separation at the border, for shenanigans with the census. So I know how to litigate with him, end quote. In response to another question from a reporter, Bragg said, quote, we've got two standards of justice, Harvey Weinstein, Jeffrey Epstein, being a rich old white man has allowed you to evade accountability in Manhattan. That includes Trump and his children, end quote. Moving on to New York Attorney General James, during the last days of her campaign said of Trump, quote, oh, we're definitely going to sue him. We're going to be a real pain in the ass, end quote. She would later go on to say, quote, I will never be afraid to challenge this illegitimate president, end quote, and said, what is fueling, quote, what is fueling my soul right now is Trump, end quote. Mr. Costello, is there a financial benefit to making campaign promises? I'm sure there is, otherwise she wouldn't have made those promises. Mr. Trustee? I think that's right. Mr. Hamilton? Correct. Ms. Weinbanks? I'm not sure I understand the premise of your question, so I you can't don't, You cannot answer if there is a financial benefit to making campaign promises? Uh, making campaign promises is to win election. You know, I don't I'm see gonna that as a financial benefit. I'm going to stick with you, Ms. Weinbanks, as the Democrat witness here today. Can you answer how much money did District Attorney Alvin Bragg raise for his political reelection campaign immediately following the announcement of 34 felony counts against President Trump? I do not know. It's $850,000. $850,000. That's a, that's a good chunk of cash. Uh, let's go on to the AG, AG James. How much did she raise for her political campaign after her civil fraud case against President Trump? I don't know, but it, it has nothing to do with whether the charges that she filed were based on the facts and the evidence and her you ability to prove them. You and I both know that's them. nonsense. Come on now. I, I do not know that's nonsense. I believe it's Not a true. soul in this room actually believes that, and no one will ever believe that. It was $400,000. $400,000, and we will submit for the record uh, copies of campaign emails soliciting donations. It almost seems, and I'm just stating the obvious here, that the harder they go after President Trump, the more money they stand to make. The common thread between all of these individuals, as well as the other cases that President Trump faces, is that many of the prosecutors suing Trump either have a personal vendetta or they seek to gain fame and money from it. This isn't hard. Those of us here today, we understand politics and what it takes to run a successful political operation. Traditionally, you want to drain your opponent's resources, drive up their negatives in the polls, and you want to keep them from engaging with voters. Now, I'm going to ask the million dollar question here. What better way to do that than to charge your opponent with 91 counts, force them to spend millions on a legal defense, and tie them up in court to keep them off of the campaign trail? It's almost like this is a plan. This is a strategy that is employed in campaigns all around the country, but we are seeing it at the highest levels today. Of course, as an incumbent, you have an added advantage of using taxpayer-funded offices and agencies and officials, and we all know that you can never go up against the federal government because it is an endless stream of resources. Isn't that correct, Mr. Costello? Without a doubt. Exactly. If that is not law what law lawfare is, I don't know what is. Lawfare, by definition, is exactly that, utilizing the law to take down your political opponents. It is an abuse of power. Mr. Trustee, you said earlier a pretty chilling statement that you fear we have, quote, crossed the Rubicon, that the ends now justify the means. I feel like many Americans agree with you. Heck, 
if it weren't for double standards, I feel like our uh, Democrat colleagues in this administration wouldn't have standards at all. But I feel that the credibility of our institution is at stake here, because to your point, the ends somehow have justified the means. And I've, I've pulled some research out of a Harvard Law, uh, Harvard Law study that suggests that district attorneys pursue crimes and longer sentences at higher rates during election years. So while DA Bragg and AG James terms end in 26 and 27 respectively, and of course DA Willis is facing re-election this fall, is it crazy to question whether any of these prosecutors are weighing their re-election efforts in their choice as they pursue President Trump? Final word to you, Mr. Trustee. Right. It, it's certainly not crazy, and I think that there's evidence that supports that conclusion. And again, I never get to the money part. If you're a prosecutor, you're not supposed to be a politician. You're not supposed to announce your target first and then search for an inventive way to charge them with heretofore unknown crimes in a lot of cases. So that's the problem for me, is not chasing down all the politics of how they stand to gain, but that as a prosecutor, you have a sacred obligation to pursue evidence, not people. Absolutely, a predetermined outcome. Correct. Thank you to our witnesses for appearing. My time has expired. I yield.